using the Laplace transform, solve the following initial value problem. So we'll have y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y equals e to the t, y prime of 0 equals 1, y 0 equals 0. First, let's recall the definition of the Laplace transform. So it's going to take a function f of t. It's going to return another function with variable s. So we'll define it as the indefinite integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Here, we're going to treat s as a constant when we integrate. Of course, we also have to worry about whether our integral is defined here, but for our problem here, that's not going to be a problem. Now, how do we proceed? We're going to apply the Laplace transform to both sides of our ODE. We're going to isolate the Laplace transform of y. Then, if we need to, we'll use partial fractions to expand. Once we've done that, we'll take a look at each term and see if we can identify where those terms come from. Then that's how we get our answer. What drives our process is the following key formula. We take the Laplace transform of a derivative, we get the Laplace transform of the original function times s minus our original function evaluated zero. Now, we can apply that to as many derivatives as we like. Okay, the idea here is, for instance, if we have second derivative, that's going to be the derivative of the first derivative. So in our formula, wherever we have a y, we just put a y prime. Then we'll have Laplace transform of the second derivative of y is so equal to the Laplace transform of the first derivative times s minus y prime zero. And then I could substitute this term out using our formula. So we'll wind up with s squared Laplace transform of y minus s y zero minus y prime zero. So this we're going to need for later on. Now, where do we get our key formula? That's just integration by parts. So with integration by parts, we'll take a look at our definition. So we're doing the Laplace transform of y prime. Okay, that's going to give us back a function in s. In our integral, we're going to treat s as a constant. We're trying to find something that integrates nicely. We'll call that dv. Okay, you'll need to try a few things out usually. Here, we're going to go with y prime dt. So that's going to be our dv. Our u is going to be what's left over, so that'll be e to the minus st. And then what do we have? All right, if I want to take the antiderivative of y prime with respect to t, okay, what's an antiderivative? That just says, find me the function whose derivative is y prime. Your obvious choice is going to be y. So we're going to let v be equal to y. Then if I take du, so we're taking the derivative of this term with respect to t, s is a constant. So we'll get minus s e to the minus st dt. Now we can apply our formula. First step, we multiply down the diagonal. So it's going to give me y of t e to the minus st. We evaluate at infinity and zero, take the difference. Of course, when I evaluate at infinity, we're just saying take the limit as t goes off to infinity. Now, to make our process work, we're just going to assume that this goes off to zero. Then I'm going to put zero in here, and that's going to give me y zero e to the zero. e to the zero is one, so we just get a minus y zero. Now, for the other part, we're going to subtract off what we get when we integrate the product in the column. So it's just going to be a minus, minus s, e to the minus st, y dt. So the minuses are going to turn to a plus, or s is a constant, so I could pull it out. So what's going to be left over is going to be our integral of yt, e to the minus st, dt. That's just going to be the Laplace transform of y. So we'll have s, Laplace transform of y, and then you note what's left over is our formula. Now, we apply the Laplace transform to our ODE. So if two things are equal, then when we take the Laplace transform, we stay equal. On the left-hand side, the Laplace transform is linear, so we can split up sums, factor out numbers. So this will reduce to this sum here. On the other side, we have the Laplace transform of e to the t. So either you have that filed away, or we can work that out now. So I'll do it for general e to the at, where a is just a number. Now, if we do the Laplace transform of e to the at, 
Okay, that's gonna take the function e to the at. It's gonna return a function with variable s. So what do we do? We're gonna put e to the at into our integral. Okay, that's gonna be against e to the minus st, and that's gonna be against dt. So our variable's t. So the a and the s are treated as constants. Then we're gonna take e to the a minus st. I want its antiderivative. For here, we're gonna assume that a minus s is a negative number. So this won't collapse down to a zero to give me a one. We're gonna have something that's gonna be with an exponential. Okay, you do your substitution. We're gonna get one over a minus s, e to the a minus st. And then I wanna evaluate at zero and infinity. Okay. One reason I want a minus s to be less than zero, to be negative, is because we want, as we take the limit, as our t goes off to infinity, we're gonna want our function to go down to zero. So that's gonna be the case here, for instance, if we had e to the minus t. So if you have a negative exponent, as we go down this way, off to the right, you're gonna drive down to zero. If I had a positive exponent, then this thing's gonna go off to infinity, and then we're not gonna be able to work with this. So. If we evaluate, going off to infinity gives me a zero. Putting in a zero here just gives me a one. You have e to the zero, so that's one. Now it's gonna have a minus sign on it so I could switch the order in the bottom. So our answer is gonna be, if I have the Laplace transform of e to the at, where a is a number, out's gonna come the function one over s minus a. Okay, and here we'll have to have the s is greater than a. All right, we're gonna need this for later on. So what comes out of the left-hand side the right-hand side? So for L of the second derivative of Y, L of the first derivative of Y, we're gonna use our formula from the previous board. What do we get? So using our initial conditions, second derivative, we take its Laplace transform. Out comes this factor. For Laplace transform of first derivative, okay, we're gonna multiply that by a minus two. Initial condition makes us go to zero, so we get this term here. And then we put everything together, so this is our left-hand side, that's my right-hand side, and then we just start combining things. So you'll note, over on the left-hand side, we have a one, okay, this minus one's all by itself, so I'll push it to the other side. Then we collect all the terms in front of the Laplace transform of y. This is gonna factor. Okay, if I collapse what's happening on the other side, this is an s minus one over s minus one. So when I add the one, we're gonna get s on top. And then our Laplace transform of y is this rational function here in terms of s. Now, if you go to your list of Laplace transforms, you'll note this is not in your list. So we're gonna need to do a little bit more work. So that's gonna be a partial fraction expansion. Now, we set up our partial fraction expansion. So we have only linear factors. All the exponents are equal to one. So we'll just have one term per factor. We clear the denominators. And then we're just gonna target the zeros and the denominators. So we'll get this. And then we're just gonna let s be equal to one, minus one, and three. What comes out? Straight shot to our coefficients. So now, we can write our Laplace transform of y as so. In this case, we recognize each of these as Laplace transforms of functions of the form e to the at. Now, what our inverse Laplace transform tells us, if we have any terms like this, then what we do is we return e to the at. So here a is equal to one, here a is equal to minus one, here a is equal to three. So, to get our y, we just convert. So that'll give me y equals minus quarter e to the t, minus one eighth e to the minus t, plus three eighths e to the three t. So that's my answer. Of course, we wanna check our work. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna check the three conditions that were in our initial value problem. First, we had y zero was equal to zero. So we put zero in here, zero comes out. We had that y prime at zero was equal to one. So we take the derivative, put zero in, one comes out. Then for the last part, we have to check our ODE. So I want to check that y double prime minus two y prime minus three y 
is equal to e to the t. Okay, that takes a little bit of elbow grease, but that's also gonna work out. So Laplace transform gets us to our answer.